Om Namah Shivaya. In Valedication class today we will start chapter 2 Fundamental Doctrines of Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma holds that God is the one supreme, pure, infinite being, undivided and whole whose light illumines all. That pure being is the intelligence underlying and pervading everything. It is the infinite innermost self of all sat chit ananda or pure existence pure consciousness and pure bliss since god is the innermost self of all all beings are nothing but that man has the great blessings of being capable of realizing his ultimate identity with god indeed this is the goal of life and every facet of Sanatana Dharma leads in this direction of recognizing this identity. This is the meaning of the term self-realization. Swami Vivekananda in one place said that if we believe we are Atman, power will come, purity will come, all that is good will come. Once we are roused to the Realization of our real self, once we are rooted in this self, we shall see how our willpower grows. Now moving to polytheism. If God is conceived as one and without a second, why do Hindus worship so many different deities? As mentioned earlier, Sanatana Dharma expresses life in accordance with the eternal values that support the existence of the universe and all of life and evolution. It must thus spouse not only the ultimate truth but the truths of all states of life at every level of evolution to uplift and guide all beings whatever their stage of growth and experience. The supreme truth reveals by Sanatana Dharma explains that God is one without a second. In other words, everything is that infinite self. Yet, only a few can even conceive much less experience this supreme truth. At lesser levels of evolution, duality guides man's life. Thus for the average person, God must also be conceived in terms of duality. Otherwise, God would remain an abstract concept out of the reach for the general population. Various aspects of divine intelligence function in natural creation and have been recognized as such since ancient times. For instance, the Vedic tradition revered gods representing natural forces like Indra, Agni and Marut, each playing their respective roles in the universe. These gods were solicited with ritual sacrifice for their grace and their blessings were tangibly experienced. The sages recognized that people were of diverse temperament and their natural tendencies of worship differed from one another. Hence, they conceived of different aspects of the one supreme God and gave them different names, forms and attributes for the sake of worship like Shiva, Brahma, Vishnu, Devi and so on. Nevertheless, the ultimate reality remains this, that God is one, infinite and inexpressible beyond form, name, qualities and attributes. Our beloved Amma in one place beautifully explained that the wind can appear as a gentle breeze, a strong wind or a ragging storm. Just as air can be still or blow as the wind, water can turn into stream or ice. God can assume either an attributeless state 
or a state with attributes. In the same way, it is one and the same God whom Hindus worship in many forms and states like Shiva, Vishnu, Ganesha, then Durga, Kali and Saraswati. In Sanatana Dharma, people have the freedom to worship God in any form or state that suits their own tests and mental development. And this is how the different manifestations of God appear in Hinduism. They are not different gods. They are all aspects of the supreme being. Next class, we will start the law of karma and the doctrine of reincarnation or rebirth. Om Namah Shivaya.